Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Deaths, back with another Kamihime Project video. Now, this one is just the first of quite a few videos that's going to be popping up along the way, because there's a lot of stuff they added, so expect quite a bit of that. Plus, I'm probably going to do what is the final version of a, basically a beginner's quick guide, because as far as I've seen from stuff that, um, JP gets recently, it's going to basically just have, for the most part, quality of life changes and in-game content, so I think now is a good time to sit and do a beginner's guide, like a, an official one, one that's going to just, just be finalized, period, unless something really major changes for something, something for a new player, because they're focusing a lot more on just getting stronger for the veteran players, but, um, Speaking of changes, one of the first things you're already seeing, we have anim animated Alyssa, and she's got different outfits and all that now. So, for those of you that like her, well, she got something new. And there's also these little Easter st egg stamps where you can get some stuff. I thankfully had one right there at the beginning of the screen, so I just got some free. So, that's kind of like the fourth anniversary thing. They lumped them all around the whole place, so if you go looking, you'll go find like the um, Easter eggs. So there's multiple. Just search around, look, look at different things. You'll find those. Um, big thing that I should mention right now, and I'm going to do it on camera. Well, I think. Pass all the Easter eggs. They have a daily. They had a daily ten pool. Essentially, I think it's in the star coin section now. They may have fixed it. Or no, they removed it. Okay, never mind. But um, double check the gotchas because uh, there there may be um the free ten pools. So, that's something to know. Also, they seem to really be straying away from the grab bags that give you the, the um, fourth tier souls out the gate. So, that's something that's not... I don't know. But, um... Double check the gotchas. There's some stuff that may or may not have popped up. I'm going to see right here. Yeah, no. Okay. But, um... Speaking of gotchas, that's leading into this next thing. Nikkei medals. Now, you do not get these if you do not spend on the game. Or unless they give you some free pools like they did uh, everybody. But, um, these, this is like more or less a special shop that you can just get extra stuff for pulling on things. You do not get a Nikkei medal if it does not use star coins. The only exception is the zero star coin pools. If you have, if it's a jewel gacha or a gem gacha. You won't get Nikkei medals, period. But they give you extra stuff in order to get some some things that p potentially work towards um fourth tier souls. A lot of it seems to be oriented towards that. And then there's also um storyline stuff they'll give as well. But this is the main highlight of it. These um these gotcha tickets. Now I mentioned in a previous video that events that will start giving these, so you'll get like two per event, but you have to basically clear out the event list for that. But um. You get more of these from Nika um, medals as well. So if you want faster SSR guarantee pools, start spending um, star coins. But um, that's kind of it on some of the minor stuff. Now something that's a little bit major. And I'm going to go into quest and actually show this raid boss available because I know there's usually one in here. Well, there isn't actually. But I have gotten sent quite a few of these. But you see this right here. Battlefield weapons has been added. This is very difficult content. At least when it comes to the Titan Hunts. Weapon break is dependent on how strong your teams are. But if you're not handling guild order, you have no chance at weapon break anyway. And you need to do that on all six elements to be really optimal on it. Now, the whole deal with um, Titan Hunt. And I've already done the... Um, Hyperion one, you'll see a video about this. This 
is harder, harder than these things. And actually, I never started this. Okay, I gotta change that. I guess I've been using everybody else's because I got a lot of water canvas. But anyways, this right here is harder than anything else you're going to find on any other raids. This is the hardest raid content in the game. You need you need um drops from this Titan hunt to open up the Ragnarok Plus version. And it is very, very, very difficult content. You do not want to jump in until you are it is literally in-game content. It is that's the best way to put it. It is literally in-game content. And to make it even worse, this one right here, you not only need to be a very high rank, and you only get one per day, there's a six person limit, and nobody can use elixirs. So, make sure you're very well prepared for this, make sure you know what to do. I will have videos of how to fight these guys, if I haven't done so already. But, as for the weaker one, you just need to be rank 81, but you're probably going to need to be really strong, because... Without a fourth tier soul, which is um the S class ones, you're pr you're pretty much going to have little to no chance of winning. So you definitely want to be extremely beefed up. This rank requirement is a lie, actually. Like I wouldn't even worry about it until you at least got your first S class soul, and hopefully R um Romulus or Andromeda, not Andromeda, um Escleptus, but. If you don't have them, you can still use somebody like Andromeda or Joan. You do want defensive or healing for these, because that is the safest way to take these guys on. You don't want to try and shell out as much damage as possible. You just want to survive while dealing a good amount of damage. Especially true of Atlas, which is this Ragnarok Plus one, because he is designed to really just mess with you. These are some of the most trollish raids I've seen so far, and it is doable. It is definitely doable, but you need to be super strong. But the other half of the battlefield of weapons, weapon break, and I still gotta do my run for today. This, you want to be able to have teams that can deal with guild order across all elements, and quite well at that. Because if you ask me, this is a this is actually harder than Guild Order, but not much harder. However, the biggest gimmick is the fact that you're gonna want these, because these little um, boxes right here, and preferably the EX one. So the EX one's gonna shift every single day. You're gonna want to do it on hard, but you only get like one challenge right now. I heard it will change later on, but if you want the most materials, here's what's gonna happen. You'll see an element right here, you'll see a weapon type, and hopefully the EX box above it. So in this case, you need a team of Kamihime, doesn't matter what rarity, that use axes, well not use, but love axes, and are water. So, in that case, I would have to go to my party. I would have to switch over. Oh, if you're wondering, this is the team I use for um, Hyperion. But, um... Because Caspar can actually work too. But I would have to go over to my water team, hit change all. And then there's this neat little sorting function too where you can actually see what you need. So I can remove that rarity because I want all of them. Switch to water. Doesn't matter what type. Sort out everybody that likes axes. And I would have to put all six of these guys on my team. Because you do want a full team that does that. On top of this, you want a soul that likes axes. So that's something to remember. And off the top of my head, it's the um, it's the the Lancelot line, which is like Lancelot um, Lancelot Arthur. And I can't remember the names of the other two right now, but you that's one of them. And another one would be the Hercules line. So you're going to want to make the full team have all this. Also, you only get to use an elixir once, so that's something to know. But it'll drop some extra items and stuff. I've done one of these on camera, so I just did a test run not to do the uh, expert, I mean the EX box one, 
because the EX one is going to give you some more random stuff, but it's extra stuff to speed up the grind. But if you want the most optimal grind to get the fastest stuff, you're going to want to try and aim for these EX chests whenever you see it. And you will want to aim towards the element you want because here's the type of stuff you will unlock for doing all this stuff. Now, the Adolans, you'll get elemental vials to unlock them, but these guys are actually pretty strong, especially for players that don't have 100% Adolans, because upgrading your stuff, eventually you will start unlocking them, and the details for this, you'll deal damage to everybody and then add extra phantom damage, which is based on how, many, how, how strong you've gotten them. I believe max power... If I remember correct from the, the JP wiki, will let them deal 1 million extra damage to all enemies. And you can also use them at the start of the fight. So, there's that. It says can be summoned once. Doesn't matter how strong they are, you can use them at the start of the fight. So, it's more like a case of summoning them whenever, but you can only summon them once. If you're one of those type of people that really want to try and speed up some grinding sessions, you can get like 5 of them. And be capable of dealing like 5 million damage in the first 5 turns. On top of whatever else damage you can do. But here's the thing. It starts off with like 80% towards the element. The light and dark ones are a little bit more limited because they're like 10% behind. But when you fully max them out, they'll be all become 100% odd doings. Because the light and dark will give 100% and the other ones will give 110%. So... If you're not having the best of pool luck, and eventually they'll add, um, they'll change the I don't orb shop so we get the, um, the hundos there too. Actually, I don't even know if they changed it yet, but that's something to know. You'll be able to get those. And of course, the Nikkei Metal Exchange is here too. And yeah, they haven't changed these guys. So... You're going to need a lot of Idolan Orbs in order to make those guys, but personally, I would prefer you clean out this shop, because once this changes, you'll start getting 100% Idolans from there, too, so that's something else to keep your eyes on. Now, other thing in Battlefield Weapons is these weapons right here, and I haven't even looked at them yet, but you need a lot of crap for these, too. These little orb fragments, you need to sell off your weapons in order to get this. If you sell off a um, an event SSR, you won't get as much as you, as like an SR weapon from a gotcha or um, SSR especially from a gotcha. So it has to be a literal Kamihime weapon that's SSR if you want the most of these, and you have to sell that off because that's like 250 fragments towards whatever weapon type it was. These weapons are very strong when used correctly, but there's a lot of catches. First and foremost, this is where where the whole teams that like certain weapon types really kick in because this is a massive boost towards people that like that weapon type. So, everybody that likes a sword, there you go with this. You can only make one of these per um type too. But if you max this out, as far as I remember, from um, JP Wiki, it should be 30% Defender, 30% Assault, and you get a second um, second skill you can release whenever that does all this type of stuff. Where, if you have certain settings, it will up the final damage that's, like, I think up to 50%, but it will up the final damage of what you do based on what happens. Like, this one says if your HP is 50% or less, your um your advantageous element damage is increased, meaning like if you if you're on like say a light team fighting a dark boss, then your final damage is gonna increase whenever your um health is below 50% and you like the sword. All of this is preferred based on who likes what. And then there's one for 90% or more, there's one for just normal attacks, there's one for abilities, there's one for bursts. Honestly, the main reason I'm even trying to get one of these is because 
I want to get this glaive and then get this ability right here where it is going to up the ability damage because that's very good for Spiky Medea and, and she's very strong if you set her up correctly like so you'll double possibly even triple her damage but um you can't even get these until you get this step done so that's something to know and you have to do it for each skill like literally each skill so this is a lot of grinding if you know the, the um, fourth tier soul list like the s-class souls it's on that level of grinding for one of these and it takes a lot of experience to up these like these weapons eat up so much skill experience just like something else i'll show in the shop but if you want to make them full power you still need a machine beast because one of machine beast details is these sub effects we'll get used to that later on but final break limit at dolan's will also start getting sub effects as well that means when you set them in a sub slot they give this effect so when the equip when the, the um, fire characters actually use the um, lucent weapons they'll get the um, effect boosted you won't get the main effect by putting them in a sub slot and you won't get the sub effect by putting them in the main slot so keep that in mind now this last part is locked because we don't have the um the guardian plus rage yet so best we'll get these guys is here but as you can see you need these elemental valves for that one and you need specific weapon um usbs for the lucent so that's where it's very important to pick and choose what you do here if you can go for the ex chest and still get get the same element you want by all means do so it is honestly more optimal to do that because you probably want multiple um machine beasts but for right now just focus on specific specifically what you want to grind and i really had to break this down because this is very important this is a hands down the hardest thing like i did the one test run with the light sword and no light spear and i got like nine of these because i had a full team that was able to do that and then there's the elemental stuff too like see i got my six light right there Although I wonder why one had thunder. I don't I don't know why it came up thunder. I guess that was random. But um you get a lot of this stuff too. Like this is what you need in order to open up the Atlas raid for those of you that are actually strong enough to take a take it on. And then there's like exchanges for different stuff too. So like I can get an aura core in order to exchange for one of these if I really wanted to. Or get some of this other stuff with the deflection steals if you need to like speed up your grind. So, something to know. Speaking of shop, this is important. These are some of the strongest weapons in the game. This is why you're going to want the 50 Draconic Eyes because they've been added. And they're stupidly strong. For those of you that don't know, each one, like each element, will have one weapon that will work towards assault and pride or assault and vigor you'll know which one it is when you read the second skill because it'll say vigor for one which means this is assault plus vigor for the second skill or it'll say pride but more it just says lower the hp to higher the attack value more or less that's still pride so these are some of the most overpowered weapons in the game when used correctly and their stats are incredible they are probably like the best stats among any of the weapons but you see you need 50 dragonic eyes and you can only ever get one of each you will need these items you will need these items to increase them anywhere close to final break so that's all the more reason not to spend your medals on anything but the um the purple stuff when it comes to the tower and the guild guild um competition because you'll want these and you'll want these don't worry about anything else now there is also something else that i've noticed as well and i can't exactly show that but the thing is we've gotten changes on the weapon skills so now elaborate's gotten buffed rush has gotten buffed barrage has gotten buffed they've changed how some buffs work too where you can get like 100% vigor and then 
you can actually go past that point when you buff it with um, characters. So you get like 100% from weapons and then you get like whatever your characters boost to. There's a lot of subtle changes with the, um, the weapon skills so that that did alter like a good hand handful of them but not all of them. Assault still works the same, pride still works the same. Vigor on weapons works the same, it's just the fact that buffs now actually add to it as well. So you can go past 100%. I can get like 150% if I set up and get that, that 50 eye weapon that I was just looking at. And then also use a ton to buff somebody. They'll, they'll have 150% vigor, which is insane. But also, they've changed how some of the soft caps work. I don't know if the burst soft cap has now been officially limited to 7 million. I don't know that for sure just yet. But that's something to look out for. They also managed to have some people are now reporting that they're dealing like 400,000 normal attacks pretty easily. That's because the soft cap now has two points where it starts um, having damage deteriorate. It's a little bit more generous. After the 350,000, if I remember correctly, it is half damage gone from that point on. And then I think after 550,000, it will hit the normal like 10% of what you would normally do. So, excess damage past 350,000, cut in half. Excess damage past 550,000 will re be reduced to 10%. I think that's how it is for normal attacks now. I don't know if they change the, the same way with bursts and abilities. Just treat them as normal. It's pretty hard to even try and get to 2 million anyways without a very, very strong grid, and then you have to, like, debuff the enemy and all that. But... In the case of normal attacks, you might actually hit those now, so, because it's, it's easier to hit the burst caps with, um, normal attacks, now that that's actually, I mean, it's easier to hit the normal attack caps now that they've given a lot of stuff towards that. Plus, if you're using any strong buffs, like, like Caspar's buff when you're using advantage element is very, very strong. And then, I don't know if it has happened or when. But on the way, there should be changes towards the souls, where the fourth tier souls, a lot of them get buffed, a lot of them become very, very strong, a lot of them become very, very worth it. Now, I'm working towards Romulus, because she's by far one of the most versatile souls when it comes to the later con content. I'm still getting other stuff, but I will eventually grind this out. This is the easy part. Stuff I'm getting is like this. Like, this is just a fire list because of the fact that it automatically defaults to the fire list. But I have her weapon, and I'm more or less working towards the harder stuff like this. And then getting stuff like this. And then this is easy because I've racked up a lot of these. So, there's that. Like, Third stage and second stage, a lot of people have probably already got the stuff. I'm going to need to get more of these, but third and second stage, a lot of people got most of the stuff usually, or will easily get it because it's like the easiest way to grab things. Fourth and fifth is the tricky part, so that's why I say you focus on. Except for these books. These books, you're going to need five regardless. Now then, others that will get, like, I know... If off the top of my head, Charlemagne was who I was thinking of that's stronger than Arthur. She gets buffs, Romulus gets a little bit of buffs, I think as Kleptus was left unchanged, I don't know. I know Medeo had little to no changes. Hector gets very, very strong, if, if she, she already is strong, but she gets even stronger, enough to probably rival Yori on who can deal, deal out the most burst damage. So, and I said burst damage, not burst count, because Yori still has that. Perseus, I do believe, gets changed. Caspar, I think, got like one change, and that was it. This one gets extremely strong. She's like considered high tier. Like, among all the S class souls, she's considered high tier. So, when they give her changes, she's going to get exceptionally strong. This one as well, especially considering the fact that DML now is starting to shift a lot more towards a technical effect meta which means normal attacks, this is her forte, you'll probably want her later on. Because there's some characters that give some insane, like, 
boost towards normal attacks and all that. Then combined with certain certain setups and whatnot, you can probably start showing out like two, three million normal attacks. Like, like, and I mean per hit, like that much damage per hit. So she's definitely going to be worthwhile later on. Yuri is always Yuri is just Yuri. If you want to show a burst pretty often, you want to get this one, and you want to start setting up towards that. They don't change her, but they don't need to. And then, one last thing I need to really point out, to about the, um... About the events. Now, nope, there's one more right here. And I don't know if there, it's in the end of the tab. Okay, the Haruhi one seems to have disappeared, but you'll probably be able to exchange materials for that one. I haven't grinded out this event too much, but the rewards, I can confirm. One of these is at the end of, of each soul list. So, 300 blue, 300 red. Get that. If you want free pools, get that. And these are free guaranteed SSR pools. So, as tedious as it is, you're going to want to grind that out. If you have to, hop into somebody else's raid and try to leech it or whatever, but seriously, you do want to get those. And of course, to start off the quest, you'll still need each. I've cleared these because I've already recorded that. I want to record this um, third one right here as well, but you had to do all the scenario in order to get into the raid, so that's something to know. And then speaking of which too, like, if you see, like, okay, perfect timing. If you see any of these these um machine raids pop up, keep this one thing in mind. Just like the other raids, if any triggers have been met, they will be used the minute you come in, one by one. And these machine raids have a lot of triggers. At the point where this thing is at, it could possibly wipe out my team if I'm not very prepared. And even then, it's about to lose anyways because there's like 11 minutes left and I don't think they're going to finish that off. I could probably even go in a walk just to see and probably see half the list killed. That's how unprepared a lot of people are on the server, so unfortunately, that's just how it is. That's all the more reason to build up your teams, get stronger. I've done tons of videos on that stuff. I know they're long, but watch them. Or at least look up a guide or something. Like, official Discord even has guides posted. You can look up English Wiki, you can look up JP Wiki, you can watch my videos, do something to learn how to play this game, because there's so much stuff in this game that will punish you if you screw up, and this is like the epitome of it. This raid right here, and the harder one, especially the harder one. In fact, just a quick little hint, they will nuke you out the gate. If you do not, and honestly, I don't even think you would survive with um, 10,000 HP anyways, but if you do not have 10,000 HP, you're instantly seeing a party wipe on the harder version. This one does 5,000 off the gate. However, some of their attacks can easily hit upwards to like 20, 30,000 per hit if you do not have damage cuts, and you cannot debuff how, how much um, offense they have as well. At least not yet. Hyperion will get nerfed for that, but... Yeah, they're exceptionally dangerous, so, um, know your stuff, don't jump in randomly. That's a lot to take in. And then, of course, the friend code thing is still here. I don't know when it's going to end, but whatever. And quite frankly, I've already got my 10, so I've cleared the friend code list. If you have to, make alternate accounts, especially to people that's not that far into the game, like, I would say if you're not killing Ultimate Rage yet, you might still be able to just restart, because you can get back to that point pretty quickly. Because the main thing with the raids is the fact that you want to be in this order. You should be able to clear standard the minute you start the game and start doing all your free pulls and stuff. You should be able to do Expert after, like, I'd say rank 20-ish, because I've done it. I knew what I was doing, but I've done it. And that's just soloing. You should be able to solo ultimate at some point as well. I prefer people be able to solo Ragnaroks, like the Ragnarok Catastrophe and the Guardian Raid. 
in order to be properly prepared for these guys. If you're not capable of soloing one of those, you're probably going to have a hard time. Like, I can say out the gate, I'm able to soul all of the dark lists. My white team can also soul all of the fire lists. And I haven't tried this yet. In fact, this is another one I need to start. Because, um, I help people out with their raids usually. But, um, I haven't tried to solo this, but I might. But I have soloed Wind, Wind Guardian with my, um, my strongest team. And they're capable of doing it. My fire team might even be able to doing it now because they've gotten a lot stronger. So, again, prepare accordingly because, once again, these raids are no joke. They are doable. They are definitely doable. I've already killed a few with, with um, union members and friend lists, but, well, not this one because I haven't even started it and I haven't even tried it. I'm not even thinking about trying Ragnarok Plus without Romulus or Escleptus because you're going to need them. If you coordinate things correctly, you can have damage cut throughout the entire fight. And that goes for any of these raids. You just need at least five Romulus users and you need to be able to manipulate. Like five or six Romulus users and you need to be able to manipulate the damage cut for each turn. So with enough communication, unfortunately not through this because this doesn't work. But enough communication on, say, like a Discord or Skype or whatever you need to use in order to talk to people. You can have permanent damage cut throughout the entire raids. All of them. It's especially important for these two right here because it'll really reduce how much damage you take. But without a doubt, again, prepare, prepare, prepare. I can clear this Titan. That's why I've started it. That's why I've had union members hop in and help me out with it too. Because there's no way in hell I'm able to solo it right now. But. Have been able to clear this. I can survive the entire fight. if As long as I got help. So there's that. And I don't even have the most optimal party for it. But my best settlement has run with this party. And it worked. And it worked. So. That said, do your research, prepare. And speaking of research, like I said, I will look through my video list. I will see if I did any sort of guides on the Titan raids. If I didn't, I will make one. You will see that video up soon. You will also see a video up of me test running one of the Titans, test running one of the battlefields, and you'll also see videos on it on the um event. You might also see a for beginners guide to an official one because the last ones I've done are like quick little hints or whatever. No, I'm going to just do an official guide and just be done with it. But um, anyways, that's all for this. This video's going on long enough. Again, I don't know if they did free pools for Gotcha or whatnot. They did it for two days. I don't think I don't because it um said down here it should be four days of free Gotchas. Well, no, it said it until April 3rd, so it only gave, like, two of them. So they only gave two of them. Unfortunately, those are gone. Miracle tickets should be back. Like, they said the previous one's going to close. Use it. It should be back tomorrow. So, next, very next reset, it should be back. Or somewhere around then. And then there's some gotcha campaigns and stuff, too. Right now... If you're a white main, you are going to want her right here. You're going to want to do this gotcha. If you're a white main, you can want to do this gotcha. I unfortunately did not pull her, but she's permanent. So, guess she is considered one of the first anti-Titan units. And it shows. It definitely shows. But anyways... That's all for this. This video is going on long enough. I'm going to start doing some stuff on here as well and then start getting some, some other videos out. And again, without a doubt, prepare for the Titans. Titan Hunt is definitely the hardest content in the game. The only exception might be some heroic fights, but even then, I still would say soloing a Titan is the hardest thing to do. You can do it if you have a very strong enough grid. Which probably needs money, but I can say without a doubt, without a doubt, Titans 
are in-game. So if you want to be able to focus towards them and be able to get your hands on the Lucent stuff, because you, you need to kill Hyperion for Lucent and Machine Beast. Atlas will just speed up the process, but you need to be able to kill Hyperion. So, if you want to get those guys a full power, you're going to need to do the Titan Hunt. So, that's all I got to say with this. But, that's all for now guys, more will come soon, and take care.